Hello, and welcome to the CFM Digital Badging Project Level 2 Drivers of Change, Assignment 1, Trends. In this assignment, we're going to be looking at one of the three major drivers of change that shape our course into the future. In this case, we're going to be looking at trends. And trends are forces that work incrementally and gradually over time, though of course that's a relative term. They can go relatively faster or slower, and they can change direction, but basically by looking at the data you can make projections of where things will be going in the future. So for example, here's a little graph of the population by age, 1900 to 2050, and you can see there is a trend here towards the average age of the population being older and older. So if you're looking at a force of change and you're trying to decide if it's a trend, ask yourself, can you assign it a directionality? Can you say something is getting bigger or smaller, there's more or less of it, it's going slower or faster? And can you characterize that change over time? Now when we look at trends, we want to remember to think about all of these steep categories. Steep, as you will remember from the introduction, are the categories or buckets of change that cover all of the areas we scan for in future studies. So that's social or cultural change, technology, the environment, economics, and politics or policy. What I'm going to do in this introduction to the exercise is walk you through some of the trends we're watching in CFM right now as an example of how trends work and how you look for them. The first trend that I'm going to refer to, which you can read about in Trends Watch 2013, our latest trends report, are trends in philanthropy. And we call it the changing shape of giving. And this is interesting because it's actually the interaction of a number of different trends. First of all, we looked at the level of giving in the U.S. overall. So this is total giving in the U.S. as a percentage of gross domestic product in the 40-year period between 1970 to the present, and this is inflated, uh, this is adjusted for inflation. And you can f see, in fact, that the trend, if you want to call it that here, is that giving is flat. We give about 2% of our gross domestic product, adjusted for inflation, to charity nationally. So giving overall is not changing that much as a percentage of our wealth. But there are some very interesting trends that intersect with this. Uh, this blue line is charitable giving adjusted for inflation from 1991 to 2010. Now you see it's going up. That's because this isn't corrected as a percentage of gross domestic product. This is just absolute giving in adjusted for inflation. And in fact, you can see it's gone up by 73%. Not bad. So at least as an absolute amount, we're giving more. However, this is where it gets scary. Even though the number of museums hasn't increased very much over that time, there's a very slow trend upward in the number of museums. They've increased about 15% in the past 20 years. The number of nonprofits overall has soared. It's grown by 148%. So there are way more nonprofit entities competing for money that isn't growing at the same rate. This is our competitive environment, and it makes it imperative that we look at behavioral or cultural trends in giving. And we're seeing a couple of different trends here. One of which, and I'm going to focus on this one for now, is the desire on the part of donors to have metrics that show them how the world is a different place because they gave their money. So it used to be that there was more of a general acceptance that you gave to cultural institutions like museums and the opera and the symphony because they're good organizations. That was just an accepted fact. Now, some of the major donor groups, including, for example, millennials, who are our donors of the future, and women who outgive their male counterparts by over 80%, or foundations, are all saying we want measurements. It's not enough to say you're a good organization. We want to know how you're making a difference with the money we gave you. What are the outcomes or the outputs you can measure of the project funding that we contributed? 
If you have an after-school program, we don't want to just know how many kids you served. We want to know whether their school performance or their dropout rate or their teen pregnancy rate, whatever you want to measure as a metric, has actually gotten better in the direction we'd like it to go. So there is a cultural trend that interacts with the economic trends to make this an area that museums should keep an eye on, the changing shape of giving. Another trend in the area of technology are a couple of trends associated with a form of additive manufacturing called 3D printing. This is a little tabletop 3D printer. Now, 10 or 20 years ago, we had digital printers that could create artifacts by fusing together uh, or, or liquefying and solidifying elements like plastic or metal. But 10 or 20 years ago, these cost $100,000 and were only being used by industry. And then as time went on, they became less expensive. It only cost 10000 As that trend of the mechanics getting less and less expensive continued, now we've got to the point where this tabletop model, which is you know still kind of rough in terms of the quality of its product, but not bad, only costs $2,000. Now we're getting within the realm of anybody being able to buy one and have it in their house to play with. What can you do with a 3D printer? You can print 3D objects if you have the digital data, the digital specifications, telling you what it should look like. So here's a Jeff Koons balloon dog. You know Jeff Koons sculptures. Somebody took the digital specifications of the sculpture, capturing it either with video or with some other kind of scanning device, fed that digital specification into a 3D printer, and it fused together plastic to make a miniature digital, a miniature physical replica of the sculpture from the digital data. Something so simple even a child can do it. You can also manipulate and mash up the data. So for example, here is an object that was created at a hackathon at the Petropolitan Museum where somebody scanned two different sculptures, manipulated the digital data to make a new artifact, and then printed it out. And it can also be used for research. Here is a 3D replica of an early hominid skull that was created from a digital scan that can, is accurate enough to help researchers with their work. So several trends here as well. The technological trend of having a highly sophisticated way to turn digital data into a physical object, and the mechanics of that becoming less and less expensive, as well as an increased desire on the part of users, whether it's learners or artists or scientists, to use this technology to do their work. 3D printing. The last trend I'm going to look at as an example are trends in education, or as we call it, the great unbundling. Now, all of these trends are in Trends Watch 2013 if you want to read more about them. One of the trends here is the increasing amount of average student debt. Right now, the average college student is graduating with $25,000 in educational loans that they have to pay back. And at the same time, they have rising unemployment, another trend. So for the first three years out of college, over 50% of college graduates are either unemployed or underemployed. So that means they have no source of income to pay back that debt. At the same time, collision of trends again, we have a rising number of other ways of getting instructional content, whether it's digital textbooks, whether it's high quality streaming video, where there might be content through sites like TEDx or Big Think or Khan Academy. There are lots of nonprofit learning organizations, many of which are delivering digital content over the web for free. You have the rise of massive open online courses where major universities like Stanford, Yale, University of Pennsylvania are offering content over the web, sometimes for free, sometimes for a fee if you're going to get a credit, but still much less than college tuition. When you look at these two trends, the rising debt, well, more than two trends, rising debt, lower employment, and many, many other ways to access educational content, you have destabilizing forces eating away at the basis of traditional higher education. The last trend we're seeing that might impel a new era of education 
is the rise of credentialing systems that enable people to use these alternate sources of instruction, whether it's online courses or face-to-face -face mentoring, to get recognized, respected credentials that they can then use in smaller pieces, so-called micro-credentials, to build up the equivalent of a traditional resume that says, I graduated from X college with this degree. One of the forms, of course, of micro-credentials are digital badging. That's why we're trying this pro project, and this is why you're trying it out as well. In this case, we have museums responding to the trend by taking content they had already developed, like the Smithsonian digital badging for the classroom, which adapts these existing programs that they had and allows kids to use that content to earn digital badging, in this case, the tree hugger badge, for the activities they engage with in the museum. All right, now it's going to be your turn. Your assignment is to review your scanning, the news items, blog posts, tweets, etc., that you've been compiling in the course of your project, and skimming over and synthesizing that information, identify five trends you feel may have a profound impact on your organization, your community, or society as a whole. And remember to think about all the steep categories. It could be a cultural trend, it could be technology, it could be economic, and you will be filling out your trends worksheet based on that content. I look forward to seeing what you submit.